We'd like to welcome everybody to game two at the Southeast Regional. The winner of Michigan, Oklahoma State, will face Ohio State for the right to go to the Final Four. Jim Nance and Billy Packer, 12 to 8 Michigan. Sean Sutton of the Oklahoma State Cowboys on the line for one more. 13.56 to go in the first half. You know, Jim, I really thought if there'd be pressure on anybody, it would not be Eddie Sutton, but it would be Sean, who has to have some very tough memories from his stay at Kentucky, particularly that last year when not only his father, but what he thought maybe was his entire basketball career having no chance to ever be rekindled. Sean Sutton called that whole situation at Kentucky. He said it was a nightmare from hell. But they've returned now to Lexington. Eddie Sutton sitting on the same bench where he used to coach the Wildcats. Jalen Rose for the Wolverines. There is Rose getting inside the three-point line. That's where he's going to have to operate against Williams. 14-10 Michigan. Byron Houston a three. Houston is one for three at the start of this game. And a foul called against Oklahoma State and Corey Williams, his first team foul number four. They have two, by the way, on their starting center, Brian Reeves. And Jim, Byron Houston, who in the NIT preseason was burying those three-point shots, made five against Georgia Tech, but has not been shooting it well of late. For the year, he's only 22 of 76, down around 28%. So if possible, I'm sure Eddie Sutton liked him to get him to shift that, either drive low or get down low, post up on Howard. Trying to dump it into Eric Riley, out of bounds belonging to Oklahoma State. Davis got by with a foul on that one. So far in this game, Jawan Howard with six for the Wolverines, who lead it 14 to 10. On the court for Oklahoma State, Sean Sutton with the basketball. Along with Cornell Hatcher, Byron Houston, Randy Davis, and Darwin Alexander. There was a push off with the left hand by Houston. Well called. Game summary, Billy Packer. Well, I thought, Jim, when this game started, it was very obvious early on that Michigan had the superiority in terms of the athleticism on the floor. Then Eddie Sutton made some major adjustments, took Reeves out. It might have been a little bit nervous playing here in this ballgame, let's be honest. He talked to Eddie Sutton about the nervousness in his first game. He said, well, I'm not nervous about the game. I'm nervous about thinking about that airplane ride to New York. <laughs> so imagine what he's thinking about today. Riley gets it back out to King. He's already hit one three. Make it two. Now, for those of you who will be getting UTEP in Cincinnati, we'll be switching you later to that game. 11.07 is the tip time Eastern time for that one. We'll get you all on time for the start of that game. Now, Michigan, we set the Oklahoma State lineup a moment ago. Michigan started with the Fab Five, and now they have Riley, a seven-footer in there now. So four starters and Riley. Ryan Reeves was fouled on the back by Ray Jackson. And you'll look at Reeves, the man Billy spoke of a moment ago, nervous about that first plane trip when they were headed to the NIT in New York. He has two fouls, Reeves. This time, he was fouled. Well, he was matched up early with Howard. They Howard a lot quicker. And I have Riley now, Weber back in the game, giving Howard, Juwan Howard, a little bit of a rest. two excellent defenders neither one going to take many shots and Hatcher a good man at distributing the ball Reeves has position inside and was trying to get it against Riley but see Riley probably as good a big man coming off the bench as there is in the country for anyone Darwin Alexander that's the Michigan lead to five with his first bucket. Weber wanted the lob dunk opportunity for Rose that time, but Houston really got back down the court well. Riley traveled. Five turnovers against the Fab Five of Michigan. Although Riley, of course, is a junior. Official Back in Lexington with Randy Ayers, a successful Ohio State coach. Coach down in North Carolina at half. Came back in a tough, tough victory. What did you tell Jimmy Jackson at halftime? Well, to get more involved, to start moving more. And then we set some good screens for him. We freed him up. 
uh, to start the second half. And when Jimmy hits a couple now, he, he really gets into his rhythm. You've got Michigan or Oklahoma State on Sunday, both tough customers. You've played one, one of them a, a couple of times. Well, we know Michigan's very talented and uh, just have gotten better this year. That's one thing that has impressed us the most. They, they've improved over the course of the year. What about the Cowboys? Well, they're a good ball club, and, and they can defend and, uh, of course, have uh, some experience on the perimeter. So we're just happy to be there. We don't care who we play. Thanks a lot, Randy. Good luck to you. Back to you guys. Good job, Randy Ayers, and Darwin Alexander's three has cut the lead to two. Michigan by two with the basketball. Jim, on that last play, the problem was that nobody knew who was matched up against Alexander. Rose and Palenka had a problem deciding who was guarding who. They're talking about it right now. They're saying, hey, I've got number five, and, and nobody had the man with the ball. If you're going to pick out a guy to guard, make sure, or not to guard, make sure that's not the guy with the ball. Two fouls now against Corey Williams. Team foul number six. Rob Palinka in for Michigan. The inbound of the ball, and now Weber in the lane. Chris Weber, amazing play right there because he went up for the jumper and found a better pass inside. And a nice shot by Riley to realize there was a potential for the pass. Normally, you turn your head going for the rebound. Reeves and Houston haven't been able to work together inside at all. Weber. Williams never had a chance. Now, triple team. They take it away from Houston. King swings it back. Freshman to freshman to freshman, Jim. They have stated quite clearly they don't like the name Five Fab Five. They like VXs. That stands for five times. Reeves never had a chance. Well, Reeves is in over his head, Jim, in this game. Now, he may have given Oklahoma He may have given Oklahoma State some good play this year and will in his career, obviously. But tonight he's up against some superior quickness. Look at this block by Weber without following with the body. Sensational play. And then he is the man that made the block, but also the man that filled the lane on the break and put it back in. Hatcher just committed a foul, and that'll send Jimmy King to the line for Michigan, a one-and-one. One. Soon we'll be sending some of you out to the Midwest for Cincinnati and UTEP. 11.07 tip. You'll get there for the start. King has seven. He'll shoot one more. Michigan has matched its largest lead, a seven-point lead. Byron Houston, great wider. There's his spot right down underneath the basket. Jimmy King doing it on both ends. Rose, three pointer. Three point Jim Eddie Sutton has some real problems personnel-wise in this game. He doesn't have enough power inside. Reeves is not quick enough to go up against the likes of O'Reilly and a Weber. a club that was 20 and 0 to start the year then lost six of the next seven running up against a team that's physically superior here tonight give you a tournament summary three number one seeds have advanced to a regional final we've got a one and a two in the east and west finals tomorrow if uh, oklahoma state could turn this around it could be a one and a two it would be a one and a two on sunday here Two ACC teams out tonight, Carolina and Georgia Tech. And you're looking at Milton Brown, who has checked in for the first time for Oklahoma State. Reeves to the bench. Alexander. That's two good jumpers by Alexander to keep him going. Jim, when you start talking about seeds, you look at this Michigan team. May this be the talent, most talented number six seed? there, Rose, with seven. I think a lot of people felt right away when the seats came out that it was an injustice to have the Wolverines that far down. Well, I'll tell you, I thought Bill Walton was dreaming when he said, you know, we asked him who's going to win the national championship. He said Michigan. John Sutton answering with a three. And that's the place for Oklahoma State. Bring the ball back outside. Stay away from the quickness and the power of Michigan down in the low post. Oh, what a pass. Long bounce pass. 
Palenka into Riley, but a foul first. Now, when's the last time you saw somebody throw a pass like that? Just snapped it on the no, one bounce at, to I, Palenka driving the baseline. I want you to think about something there. The only guy I've seen throw a bounce pass like that's Magic Johnson. We're talking about a pass. That pass was thrown from about 40 feet on the on the bounce. Perfect. Easy to catch. Special player. Riley misses the one and one, the front end of it. So I guess I've committed the Cardinal sin. I'm, I said he was the next James Worthy. Now I have a visit with Magic Johnson. No, he was the Big Ten freshman of the year. Led the league for the first time ever, a freshman leading the league in rebounding. Over 10 rebounds a game in that league. I don't care if you're a senior, but a freshman, first time ever, as you said, Billy, to lead the Big Ten in rebounding. And here Oklahoma State now doing the smart thing. They're surrounding this defense, trying to get their superior ability from the perimeter working. That's not going to be available. That goes against Alexander, his second. And Ale you see Alexander saying to Sean Sutton, I should have passed the ball, and he's actually absolutely now, correct. Alexander, Penetrate and dish back out, because they are not going to get layups that way. Timeout on the floor. Timeout on the floor. The timeout that comes under eight minutes. For CBS. Jim Nance and Billy Packard. Curry Kirkpatrick with us as well from Lexington. Michigan 27, Oklahoma State 20 with 7.48 to go in the first half. Rob Palenka will inbound for the Wolverines. Tim, so far, Byron Houston, one for five. He has not been able to generate any consistent offensive maneuver so far. He goes in the low post, he's been hammered, and outside he hasn't made the three. I think his best maneuver is somewhere in between the foul line and right underneath the basket. is going to feel a challenge, try to put the ball on the floor against him. Nice defense that time by Houston. Howard over Reed. Corey Williams comes on. Oh, just runs right by. They call him the blur and give it to the Cowboys. Something. Uh, did he hurt his ankle there or he's just pulling his shoes up? He might have got a cramp. Some think he may be the fastest player in college basketball. Corey Williams, they call up the blur. Might have been as too quick for his own good on that play. Oh, great play by Sean Sutton. Sean Sutton hit a three and cut it from 10 to 7. And now the two with one more to come. Now, excellent drive by Sutton. He came off the screen by Houston and then used his body to get up the shot. Houston did a good job sealing off any shot blocker. Fine play. Jim, an interesting stat between these two teams. Oklahoma State has five players in their starting lineup who shot over 100 free throws this year. Michigan only has one. Only Jalen Rose has shot over 100 free throws. And now Oklahoma State picking their defense up farther out, trying to spread this game a little bit. Walk. Slipped on the floor. Turn it over. This is a subtle move by Eddie Sutton, but a very good coaching move. Make this game spread wider. Jim Nance and Billy Packer from Rupp Arena. Eddie Sutton returning. He says, we want to make history, not rehash it. But his son has 10 points and has led the Cowboys back to within four. They had been down 10. Byron Houston cannot get started. He's only made one shot. Now, Jim, he really is stepping out there, and they're giving him that shot because he hasn't been hitting it. felt that Houston fouled him. But one of the things Weber's got to realize, he's playing against one of the strongest men in basketball. He reminds me a lot of Larry Johnson in regard to that upper body strength he has. And most college players are just not used to feeling that pressure. Six minutes remaining, first half. Rose misses the three. Good job by Oklahoma State now, coming back with their guard play. Over the back door cut. Palenka did a good job. Double teaming Houston. Williams, good outside shooter. That's a three to cut it to one. It's a great job by this team. Realizing they can't get that ball inside and working it on the perimeter. They've scored nine unanswered.
Pittsburgh, Billy. I remember their shooting against the lane, 80%. Pick and roll. Weber, after Reeves, fell to the floor. Well, the guy that made that play was Howard. Very unselfish. The guards are just taking over this game for Oklahoma State. And you got to give Houston some credit for not being selfish himself. He's being very patient here. Here he is, turning around. Reeves. Rose has it. Two on three, he'll pull up. And this will give Oklahoma State a go. Fourth decision by Rose that time. Sutton can tie it with this one. That was a three-on-one that they should have got a better shot than that. Malika lobs it too high for King. Steve Fisher may want to bring his guys back down to reality. They protect, they're playing like they got a 15-point lead. Glory Williams. Yes. And got fouled, Jim. Could be a four-point play. Well, what happened to Michigan? They forgot where they were and what the score was in this game. It, you know, they felt so comfortable early on be able, overpowering Oklahoma State on the inside, but now Oklahoma State's guards have taken this game over. Three point basket. And when you look up the score, it's hard to believe, but they have a chance to take the lead right here. Tomorrow at 4 o'clock, the road to the Final Four preview show. And then you'll see the West Regional Final with Indiana and UCLA. Kentucky and Duke in the East Final to follow. The Blur or the Terminator. They say he has a million nicknames, but whatever you want to call him, Corey Williams, he's a fast one. He has 10 points off to a fast start. And four-point opportunity, he converts. And Oklahoma State takes the lead. Well, he's the all-time three-point shot maker at Oklahoma State. Also, all-Big 8 defender. And he's giving Jalen Rose fits out on the perimeter. It's a 13-2 run. And that's going against Weber. He pushed off. And what has happened? It was a subtle change by Eddie Sutton, but he has just extended this game farther away from the basket on both ends of the floor. On the defensive end, he's picking up a little higher out, forcing Michigan to have a little more space to operate from. And then on the other end of the floor, his guards are surrounding the perimeter perfectly. Alexander shuttled back in for Williams. That was the second against Weber. Team foul number seven. Two on Weber. So Brown, Milton Brown, 6'4", junior from Little Rock, Arkansas, has a one and one. Four minutes remaining in the first half. The winner to play Ohio State. Now it's Alexander on Rose. Rose could score if he can get the ball here. He's got too much size on him. Michael Talley is in for the first time for Michigan. See, there's Rose going right down in the low post. Turns on. And rebound Randy Davis. Excellent quickness to the ball by Randy Davis. Hey, that's number three on Weber. His third. He immediately heads to the bench. He's going to sit. And is replaced by Eric Ryan. Now, Jim, we talk about they are not the fresh, the fab freshmen, but one of the things that experience played in this game is that they did not recognize what was happening to them on either end of the floor, the, 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 the Michigan players. For Oklahoma State, entering number 35, Byron Houston. Houston and Williams in for Brown and Sutton. One and one for Randy Davis, 6'9", junior from Houston, Texas, out of Yates High School, a school that produced a Final Four participant three times. Left-hander, though. Michael, Michael Young. Young. You know, Jim, I saw a game early this year that Oklahoma State played and won probably one of the most perfectly executed games I saw all year, and that was at Kansas uh, against Kansas State. Byron Houston had his low of the season in that game, seven points. He matched that against Colorado. But he was very patient that game, had foul problems, sat down a lot, but the guards did so well. Tonight, one for seven, but you look up at the scoreboard and his team is leading. Official timeout. 
Oklahoma State by three. CBS. Back in, in, back in Lexington, coaches hate to admit they're superstitious, but the first thing Eddie Sutton did when he got back here was to take his Oklahoma State team down to Lane's End Farm to pat the head of the great Ali Sheba, the racehorse. This is the same place and the same head that the Michigan team back in 89 went down to pat on their way to the national championship when they came through Lexington. Back to you guys. And the man defending Jalen Rose... Corey Williams said he'd like to race Ali Sheba in a, in a 40. Yeah, in a 40. He said he runs the 40 in about 4-3. One reason he may go out for the football team for Coach Pat Jones in the fall. This will be his last year of eligibility in basketball. He'd like to maybe try a defensive back. And he'll see Eric Riley now break a 15-2 run for Oklahoma State. Jim, again, look at how far Oklahoma State has extended this game. They're creating spacing, which allows them to use their quickness against Michigan's strength. It's the blur, dumps it in. Davis should have had that one. It bounces off of Tally, right back to the Cowboys. Ten turnovers against Michigan. Well, and Houston so far has four himself and is only one for seven. And his team, you look up at the scoreboard, leading by one. He's setting a lot of screens. He's being patient. Hatcher, who's a good passer. And also what they're doing is making this a 65-point game, Jim, which is their, 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 their pattern. Tempo, yeah. Right, it's their pattern, and it's not Michigan's pattern. Houston so desperately wanting to get on track. Oh, there's Davis again, quick off the floor. Davis, much like Thunderbird in the first game, it's not the first leap that kills you, it's that second one. This is a young man who only played one year of high school basketball and really is going to be a fine player at Oklahoma State. Three now against Ray Jackson. Jackson and Weber each saddled with three personal fouls in the first half. Two-shot situation for Randy Davis. Teammates like to say about Davis, he's a walking encyclopedia of sports. He has all the stats. <laughs> well, you know, this club only shoots 68% from the foul line, but they go to the foul line so much. They went 928 times to the line this year. And to put that in perspective, Michigan, with all their power in the low post, only went 679. So almost uh, 250 more free throws on the year. That's very significant. Jimmy King is back in for Michigan, and he handles the basketball now as they move into the front court. Down two. Some solid minutes by Riley coming in off the bench now. Number two rebounder in the Big Ten last year. This year, just a backup. They playing well in this game. Under two to go in the first half. Tally driving on Sutton. Good hands by Riley again. King wide open. There goes Davis. Plus one. I think it's going to be Williams on the reach in, but shows you how strong Juwan Howard is. Williams, who's got a lot of strength, got part of the ball, and Howard was able to just take it right up anyway. First against Davis. Look at Howard. He'll go up. Oh, it was Alexander who reached in there, and Williams, and there's Williams reaching in. He just two-hand powered it right up. Well, they call it on Davis. Well, they did call on Davis. Yes. Huh? His first. Well, I guess three people got a piece of him on that shot. They could pick out anyone they wanted. Houston's fourth rebound. Davis very active down inside. A lot quicker than is Riley. Team tied, 33 all. Davis. The ball is on the line, belongs to Oklahoma State. 
Yeah, the ball was touched by Riley, and Williams wisely didn't go after it until it hit out of bounds. Final minute of the first half, our first tie, 33 all. The two seed, Oklahoma State, the six seed, Michigan. The winner faces Ohio State. Alexander. See how Rose handles the clock here. Yep. If you're Michigan, you ought to just hang on to it to the end of the half. Houston almost made the steal. A foul inside on Riley, who pushed off. He took Corey Williams out. That's his first, and team foul number 10. By the way, on the road to the yeah, Final uh, Four, a preview show tomorrow at 4 o'clock Eastern time, a round table with Digger Phelps, Mike Francesa, Bill Walton, Pat O'Brien. Dale Brown will also be in the studio, and then we'll have the doubleheader for you, Indiana and UCLA in the West, Kentucky and Duke in the East. Well, there's an opportunity for Dale Brown to ask Bill Walton what he thought about Shaquille O'Neal coming out in the, that game against Indiana. And Bill will not be afraid to respond. It'll be a nice little back and forth there. Two shots for Corey Williams. He's the high man so far for Oklahoma State with 12. There's a, Weber. There's a cage tiger over there. Chris Weber with three fouls, wanting to get back into the action. Two point lead, 39 seconds remaining. First half. Key here just to hang on and make sure that you don't let Oklahoma State get any more possessions. Michigan has to be somewhat disappointed. They had an opportunity, maybe even to go, as you said, Jim, when we were away for a knockout blow, which is tough to knock out a team with four seniors, particularly a team with the three guards that have been around in a tough conference. Michigan's had trouble going for the kill all season. Now with eight seconds to go in the half, Tally handling the basketball. Overstuck. There. by Davis. Riley again. Rose feels it. That's a brilliant play by Houston to bat the ball back out the half court to make sure that Michigan couldn't keep it alive. Smart play. 18 to 6. Oklahoma State in the latter minutes to take a two-point lead. Oklahoma State star player Byron Houston, one of eight in the first half, but the Cowboys have the two-point lead. And we'll send you back to New York. Pat O'Brien, Mike Francesa, and Digger Phelps. You're watching CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship. We'll continue after CBS this CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship regional semifinal game is sponsored by Delta Fawcett Company. Delta, the way water is brought to life. The Coca-Cola Company, an official NCAA corporate sponsor. And by Dean Witter. Dean Witter measures success one investor at a time. Dean Witter believed one thing that should distinguish his brokers is their ability to listen. Listen not only to what our clients say, but what they mean. I have a vision about retirement. I know each client has a level of comfort. You know me. I'm a planner. There is no greater dividend a firm can earn than the confidence of its clients. Help me make some good decisions. There are many ways to measure success. We measure success one investor at a time. It didn't happen in Germany, nor in Japan. It happened right here. An all-new car. Another rendition of the Land of a Thousand Dances as two teams try to get to the big dance. Uh, Michigan uh, down by two, even though Chris Weber is on the bench, and Pat O'Brien, along with Digger Phelps and Mike Francesa, we need shaves and haircuts at this point. Been here all day. Uh, a lot of things going on in this game. A lot of things. Houston, one fate for Oklahoma State. Their big guy is just two points. Weber, three fouls. And Michigan, the young team, a peak and valley team. Digger, I thought they were having too much fun when they were up ten points. You got it. Does Oklahoma State really? have to win? 
withstand another Michigan run in the second half. Look for Houston now to get back in this game second half. He's too good a player not to score. But I think the guard play, uh, when you look at Corey Williams with 13, Sean yeah. Sutton with 10, 23 points, that's what's kept them on that run when they went 18-6. a big six. Michigan run, one more coming? Michigan will come back, but don't forget, five freshmen are five freshmen. Sooner or later, they forget their role, time, and score, as we saw in that other game with Georgia Tech. The freshman committed the foul with a one-point lead. You can't do that as But as Bill Walton likes to say, he'd rather have talent than experience. And Walton's picking Michigan to win the whole thing. Uh, out in Kansas City, since he's up by 10 early in this game, let's take you out to Dick Stockton. Al McGuire, 14-10 left in the first half. Cincinnati Bearcats, the highest seed of the four teams remaining in the Midwest Regional, are leading 16-6. Anthony Buford has just hit a three. That's his second of the ball game, and now a 13-point lead for the Bearcats. Full court pressure by the Bearcats with bad track, but they didn't want to call him. And Ralph Davis follows it in. It's been a defensive game dominated by the team with the ball. Yep, Prince do at that time what he likes to do. He penetrated and kicked off. But the Bearcats are not allowing the UTEP club to get into sync where they're eating up the clock, taking them down in the half-court offense. Herb Jones, the Bearcats' leading scorer, has replaced Anthony Buford in the lineup. So it's Gibson and Van Exel in the backcourt. Up front, it's Martin, Jones, and the center is Plunk with the ball. Nearly a steal. And Herb Jones, and they said it was tied up, and so the possession hour will favor the Miners. Right now in this game, Cincinnati has five offensive rebounds, and the Miners haven't gotten one yet. They are the Miners got to make the shot the first time, or it's tapioca. <laughs> now here comes the trap, trying to trap the small guard so they can't see over it. Brent Stewart breaks it, and they get it inside to Johnny Melvin. That's what I said earlier. What, why I think that UTEP is going to get back into this ball game is that finally their baseline men are spreading down below, which gives the option. See the baseline men down below? They're spreading now. When the penetration comes here, watch Prince penetrate. Now he'll kick. Fake to the left, kick to the right. Could be a possible three-point play. And so UTEP crawling back into the game, gentlemen. They were down 10-zip early. Cincinnati, which, which they always do, turned them over. They averaged 21 turnovers a game. And I think the traps, though, Digger, in the half court are not going to be that effective for Cincinnati against those little guards. I, don't, I think they should back off a little bit. What you saw in that last play was when they spread the trap and then went through the trap and penetrated for a three-on-two. You'll see more of that. But I also feel that uh, Maxie's got to get involved for UTEP inside. Very good offensive player. Eight-point game, 19-11. to 11. Cincinnati uh, leads that one. Let's, uh, fellas, get everybody up to date on what's been going on in the Southeast Regional Semifinal. Ohio State, the Buckeyes advance. They beat North Carolina 80-73. to 73. Randy Ayers has his team primed for this tournament. Jimmy Jackson... Uh, Early in the game, uh, watch him get the slam, boom, on the fast break. And Ohio State, uh, uh, Lawrence Funderburg had a good day, too. Mike. He was the key guy. Neutralized Montrose, who was going to be a big guy. You see the, the bank shot, the little return for uh, Funderburg. He was a huge key in the game. Coming down to the end of the second half, the Buckeyes increase their lead. Jamie Skelton with the three there, and so Ohio State advances. They'll play the winner of this game in the Midwest Regional Semifinal earlier today. Memphis State, in an overtime game, comes out on top 83-79. to 79. Uh, Not real pretty win for them, as Larry Finch, their coach, said. It's great when, you, when you're able to win a game and you don't play your best. Uh, so hopefully, as I told these guys, we'll do a good game. We haven't played a great game in this tournament yet. Uh, we win it ugly, but that's the, that's the key to win. It doesn't matter how pretty it is, whatever, just, just keep advancing. We got one more big one before we had the big dance. And if I'm sitting next to you guys in a bar or a cafeteria, I'd right. say they stole the game. Absolutely. They won one. They, not that they didn't deserve to win, but they didn't expect to win. Georgia Tech yeah. made a lot of mistakes down the end of this ball game and in the overtime. I think the freshman call up and Travis Vest had a couple turnovers. James Forrest convinced that foul where it put them up. They were up one. Now they go down one. 
turned it right back to Memphis State. And Mike and I were talking how in this tournament, you, you can be on such a high as Georgia Tech was and then on such a low, obviously. Yeah, absolutely. It turns around uh, quickly, Let's Pat. look at the brackets now, and uh, how do you see this shaping up? Well, we have to wait for a couple more teams here. Cincinnati and Memphis State would be for the fourth time this year, and if Michigan wins, Ohio State beat Michigan twice this year. I was asking to look into a crystal ball there. That's right. I guess I shouldn't have done that. Uh, <laughs> Division II semifinal, our uh, Division II final is set now. Virginia Union, uh, they beat uh, Cal State Bakersfield today, and they'll play Bridgeport, uh, which beat uh, California 76 to 75 today. And of course, the men's Division II championship tomorrow right here on CBS at 2 o'clock. Uh, James Brown and Bill Rafter will be, be courtside for that one. Then at 4 o'clock, the road to the Final Four, Mike Frances and I will host a uh, group of uh, round tablers and we'll discuss all the issues in college basketball. Big, big programs and games tomorrow. Indiana and UCLA, the tip at 442. These are Eastern times. And then at 7 o'clock, Kentucky and Duke, our main games tomorrow here on CBS as we continue our coverage of the NCAA tournament. And our coverage continues here after this. Stay with us. of Fort Wayne. CBS Sports exclusive coverage of the NCAA Basketball Championship Regional Semifinal Game is sponsored by Chevrolet, the cars and trucks more people depend on. ITT Corporation, building people's dreams. And by UPS, offering 1030 guaranteed overnight air delivery. Jim, Coach Henry Iba always talks about spacing, and of course, Eddie Sutton is a disciple. Now, what we're going to see right here is the three-point line. What Oklahoma State did was utilize this area and forget about the paint where they were only one for eight in the first half. And watch what happens. They extend Michigan's defense way outside. Plenty of room for, their to, for them to operate. Bang, Sean Sutton with a jumper. They were 6 for 11 from beyond that range, and of the five shots they missed, four were missed by Houston. But they have really done the job by pushing Michigan way outside. That three you just telestrated from Sutton came when the Cowboys trailed 27-17. They then outscored Michigan 18-6 to the rest of the way to take a two-point lead. Now Michigan's going to have to turn this, if they're going to get back in the game, back into a power game inside, and there's Weber. Weber with three fouls. They want to keep this game right down in this paint. Jackson missed a short one. Weber kept it alive. Howard over Reeves. No ball on that play, and Steve Fisher really came off the bench. I thought Reeves hammered Howard. Jawan Howard. And let's get a report from Curry Kirkpatrick. Jim, Michigan Stab 5 no, almost sunk this game like a yellow submarine, but Eddie Sutton came back with defensive intensity, and he told his guys, you just got to keep that up. He wants his big guys to stop being intimidated down low. He, he feels that. The Michigan guys came out of their locker room and huddled on their own without their coaches. Steve Fisher told them, you got to keep, keep intense. How about five-second call, ref? There he finally comes. You know, you can, you know, everybody always thinks, Jim, that you only can get a five-second call out in the mid-court area against a dribbler. A postman can't stand there all day long with the ball. He was double-teamed. He was had five seconds by both guys. You don't get two and a half seconds apiece. Backward, 10 out of 14, but inside, 1 of 13. It's primarily Houston, 1 out of 8. Houston stuck a hand in there and got the steal. Second round with all America. And Reeves tries to save it. No. Having not watched Byron Houston in practice, as we had a chance last year and, and throughout his career to watch Larry Johnson a lot, I'd like to make a differential between the two. Larry Johnson, much better in stepping outside and being able to put the ball on the floor and go by. Byron Houston really had problems at that tonight because he's playing against such a superior guy in size. He can't get off the low post shot. And I don't see him stepping out and going by people with a dribble. Maybe he can do it, but I haven't seen it yet. Billy Jimmy King just gave Michigan the lead with that three-point basket. We 
remember, Weber has three on him, but Reeves hasn't been quick enough to pick up the fourth. After that basket, they just uh, handed Howard his third personal. So two quick ones in this half by Howard, three overall. And again, see where the offense is set up. About two steps beyond the three-point line. So quick. Best hit by Williams. He'll give you a cold if you play against him. You better put a hat on. 15 for Williams. And a steal by Sutton. With Weber coming down. Oh, he gives it up in the last second. And Weber picks up That's number, number four. four. The heady play of Sean Sutton. He's on Weber in his fourth team third. Yeah, Weber was just quick enough to stay with Sutton. Now watch Sutton. He knows he's coming behind. He realized he has a trailer coming offensively. He looks like the shot. All along, he knew he was going to pass. Really a touch foul on the play. But that's going to sit Weber down with four. We Riley talked about a caged tiger in the first half. What do you think it's going to be like for him now? He's going to have to sit for 10, 12 minutes. Wasn't a whole lot of contact on that one, Billy. Nope, I didn't think so either. Tried to dish it off to Houston, and Rose commits his first. So let's reset it. Weber with four. Jackson and Howard with three. No one in foul trouble from Oklahoma State. Of course, Chris Weber coming off a great game against Delane with a 30 points. Against East Tennessee State, I mean, with a 30-point game. That was Weber's career high. Yep. The last outing. On the blocks, Houston. Two guys around him. He just can't get anything off inside. One out of ten now for Byron Houston. That makes the, the team one out of ten from down inside the paint. Riley, good ball. I think it's time for Davis to come back in for Oklahoma State. He possessed the quickness to stick with Riley. Oklahoma, a town of 350 people, puts Oklahoma State back in front. High school team had seven players on it. Riley over Reeves, and Reeves, his third. A moment ago, we said no cowboy in foul trouble. Now they have one. Reeves with three. Billy, when you have seven guys on the team, it's kind of hard to hold a practice. Well, you know, Jim, it's really funny. It, it, I'm sure people at home saying, well, that's impossible. They couldn't <laughs> do anything. But they ran two-lane layup drills. <laughs> they could play some three-on-three -three and obviously have some shooting games, but never could scrimmage. <laughs> I think it's a great story, too, and the fact that Bob Knight went down to recruit Reeves on two occasions that Eddie Sutton knows about, or Bill Self, too, who was recruiting Reeves. I think the reason for it was that the original call to Bill Self about it was came from Coach Fishing Hawk. Knight heard Fishing Hawk, figured there must be some good fishing down there, even if the guy can't play. I thought it was Fishing Hook. <laughs> And then went down there and, and fished twice and uh, obviously didn't come back with a major catch, which was Reeves. Who made all Big 8 freshmen the team this year. Handed with Houston. Boy, what great eye contact between Sutton and Houston. Cowboys by three, away from the ball. Foul on Randy Davis. I thought Davis would come in here quickly, Freddie Sutton. He got the basket out of Reeves, but now he's back in there with his quickness. You see the play, good back screen by Williams. The back screen set up by Williams, and then a perfect pass. Rose right on the inbound pass. Wow, what a step. Right back to the blur. The blur gets it back out to Alexander. Jim, you talk about Oklahoma State having a, a blur. They've had some great running backs. You're a football man. So what do you think? Williams goes football. Is he as quick as some of those great running backs? NFL, I'll tell you, the NFL loves that speed, and they'll try him in a corner if he goes out for football next year. Just remember Cornell Green and Manny Hendricks out of Utah and later the Dallas. Oh, what about that? No basket. Outside. Dallas 
fourth on Howard. Michigan really in trouble now. They're going to have to go. It looks like Freddie Hunter coming up off that bench. Yes, he is. For Michigan, Freddie Hunter enters the line. Howard and Weber with four each. Freddie Hunter comes in. The senior, former walk-on, now on scholarship. Jim, you have to give Freddie Hunter a lot of credit for the success of Michigan this year. The fact that he has provided that leadership to allow the veteran players to accept the freshmen so well. Dalen Rose missing the three right back to him. That's a turnover and a timeout under 16 minutes. Oklahoma State with a one-point advantage. Each year, corporate America spends over $10 billion on overnight shipping. Yet according to a report in the Wall Street Journal, $3 billion of that is wasted. If you find that kind of inefficiency alarming... ...end up winning the race. Have you ever dreamed you could fly? Now, the world's greatest solutionist conquers the mystery of human flight without wings, strings, or camera tricks. An all-new Magic of David Copperfield, Tuesday. The road to the Final Four tomorrow, 4 o'clock Eastern Time, a roundtable. Pat O'Brien will be hosting with Mike Francesa, Bill Walton, Digger Phelps, and Dale Brown will be in the studio. That'll be followed by West Regional Action. Indiana and UCLA will play for the first spot on the Final Four, followed by the East Final, Kentucky and Duke. Riley on Houston. Now, here's where Houston ought to really be able to operate, because they don't have anybody strong enough to stay with it. Houston wide open. Still can't hit the outside shot. Well, Jim, I don't know why he'd be outside now. He's got Riley on him. He can do it. Now Michigan really has been disseminated with the foul problems they've got. Now's the time where Houston can operate inside and do some real damage. Just as Michigan didn't recognize what happened to them in the first half, now let's see if Oklahoma State recognizes what's happening on the floor for them. Freddie Hunter, left over. Sean Sutton with the hold. Well, he tried to block out Jackson, who has superior size. It's not all he can do. Sean Sutton's third appearance in the Sweet 16 this year, last year, and an 88 for Kentucky. Right. Bring, freshman. Yeah, bring back Cornell Hatcher for Sutton. Well, you know, the other thing that's tough for Michigan right now, Jim, is that they're playing with a lineup that I'll bet you did not play together very often in the course of this year. So your timing gets off. King. Randy Davis with his third. Fourth team foul, and that put Michigan, that basket put Michigan up in front, 42-41. Uh, Jimmy King, another one of the four McDonald's All-Americans that were on this Michigan great recruiting class, taken over with a great one-on-one -on -one move. Michigan has missed its last five free throws. Okay, now let's see if Oklahoma State right now is the time to get that ball down low to Byron Houston. the ball right now. Davis trying to post up Hunter inside. 15 on the shot clock. There's a lot of pushing away from the ball and they got Davis with his fourth. Uh, Jim, he was being so active down inside. Freddie Hunter, with his uh, wise experience, just let him push. That brings Reeves back in the game. Hunter, Davis has to sit down, so a very bad foul on the part of Davis. Here are some numbers for you, Billy. On the season, Michigan got 74% of its scoring from freshmen. Oklahoma State, 72% of its scoring from seniors. Now, how will that be a 
factor down the stretch, you think? Well, I think the key for Michigan is can they hang into this game long enough to get all of their foul problems behind them so that they can get Weber and Howard back in the game. And just as we said in the first game, I felt that it was important while Randy Ayers was sitting his, his starters down to rest them that North Carolina build up a big enough lead, which they did not. Riley trying to put the ball on the floor, traveled with it. 15th turnover against Michigan. And let's uh, talk about that foul trouble again. Four for Davis of Oklahoma State, Reeves with three, but Weber and Howard have been sitting for a long time with four each. Well, and remember, Weber picked up his fourth on that breakaway by Sean Sutton, so he's going to have to sit a good 10 or 12 minutes. A two with tie. Reeves with two men on him. Oh, oh nice bank nice shot by Reeves. And they call Big Country. Ties it at 43. Jimmy King. Tipped in by Riley. You made a statement earlier, Riley Billy. Riley. I think you're right. Is there a better backup center in college basketball than seven-footer Eric Riley? I don't think so when you take in consideration all aspects of the game. Kevin Salvadori did a nice job with blocking a lot of shots for North Carolina, but coming off the bench, but Riley does it all. Reeves got it in the last Hey, two for two. Back, yeah. Back to a deadlock at 45. Just hard-nosed man-to-man by both of these clubs. But because the lineups, due to the foul problems, have been so different tonight, the teams have not been smooth offensively. Corey Williams outside, but the foul is third. Team foul number six. The next one will put the Wolverines on the line. I did remember early in the year when we did Michigan against Duke, and the game before that game was the first game ever that Chris Weber has had, had a teammate since the eighth grade outscore him in a game. And here this year, Jalen Rose has outscored him on the year. Jalen Rose tonight passed Mike McGee with the all-time freshman scoring mark at Michigan. Here he is. Good oh. feed by Roddy and a good rebound by Roddy. Right back to Rose and a two-pointer puts Michigan ahead, 47-45. Rose with 11. Doing a little talking now to Hatcher. Houston trying to get back control of the basketball, reached in to commit his second. And that's number seven, send Michigan to the one-and-one one situation. Jim, it's amazing that Houston tonight has not gotten in position where he can score because he's not hitting the outside jumper, and therefore that, that part of his game has been taken away. Michigan playing to double team him any time he puts the ball down on the floor in low. Since Weber picked up his fourth and went to the bench, Michigan has outscored Oklahoma State 11 to 8. One and one for Rose. Steve Fisher would applaud that. He just wanted to keep the game close in that period. This young man on the foul line, considering a freshman, a leader, he's been the ball handler for this team all year long. 29 of 30 games in double figures. Only the game in Bloomington against Indiana was he held below 10. And he's been the key ball handler for this club all year long. Timeout under 12. Michigan 49, Oklahoma State 45. Oklahoma State's big country Reeves. He is the latter-day successor to a star of the 1940s for Oklahoma State named Bob Curlin. Bob Curlin was nicknamed Foothills, and he led Oklahoma State, then Oklahoma A&M, to two NCAA championships. As a matter of fact, 1947, 47 years ago tonight, excuse me, 1945, was the first night that, it, that Oklahoma State won the NCAA championship. Back to you guys. A victory against NYU that year, 49-45, the same score we have right now. But this time, Oklahoma State is trailing. <laughs> you 
Houston was fouled by Jackson, and that will be four on Jackson. So three of the freshmen now with four. Team foul number seven. And Jeff, talking about Bob Curlin, one of the real gentlemen in sport today. He's the president of the Basketball Hall of Fame right now. And you know, when he played, you could guide the ball into the basket on the offensive end of the floor. Can you imagine what the game would be like now if you just go ahead and say, hey, on the way down, just guide it on in there? It's changed a little bit. Yeah, it's changed the rules of the game. Two-time uh, uh, gold medal winner in the Olympics. And his coach, Coach Ivo, of course, coached two teams the gold medal and won silver. Patrick kept it alive. Alexander hits it three. They cut the lead to one. The Riley's playing almost a perfect basketball game. Everything they've asked him to do, like stepping out there. That doesn't look like a big play, but it's smart move to step out and help your teammates. Jimmy King tried to answer the three. Came up short. And that's all, Oklahoma State. Now, James Bosco comes in for the Wolverines, a part-time starter for this team, and Corey Williams for the Cowboys will take Reeves out of the game. Bosco, of course, has this his first time into the game. Earlier in the year, Steve Fisher considered him the number one outside shooting threat they had, but you don't want to come in the game before you lose and put one up. Smart play by Rose. Take the jumper on over Williams without putting the ball on the floor so he can't take advantage of his quickness. Baxter ducks, but it came over to Sutton. Yeah, they just cannot get the ball in the low post to Byron Houston at all. Freddie Hunter on the foul. We talked in the first game about Jim Jackson having big second halves. We've already witnessed several times this season Jalen Rose. Remember the Duke game scoreless yeah, in the first half? 18 in the second yep, half. Didn't have a point in the first half at 18 in the second. Game against Indiana and into the season. You know, Rose has that nasty little edge on him. He just, you know, he has great confidence in his ability. Of course, played on the number one high school team in America a year ago. That, that edge of leadership that he just thinks he can take the game and put it on his shoulders and win it. One and one, and Corey Williams hits the first. The Rose has seven in the first half, eight in the second half, and we're nearing the 10 minute mark to go. 51 49 Michigan. Seventeen for Williams, who averages eleven. Rose, oh, oh, what a play. show! And he's doing it against an all Big Eight defender with great quickness, just playing right over the top of Williams. Gets the ball down into Houston, and they just can't make it work. There he is. Now, now, Riley hurt his hand a little bit on that play, but Houston just cannot get the ball over the defenders out playing in the night, whether it be Riley or Howard. Last year, uh, Houston was the co-MVP of the Big Eight. This year, he trailed Anthony Peeler in that role. Just moved under 10 minutes to go. Michigan with a three-point lead over the two-seed, Oklahoma State. And that's going the other way. Three seconds that time on Houston. He's working on Riley. Riley giving some valuable minutes to Steve Fisher. Jalen Rose, you're looking at 17 points on the game, 10 in the second half. Meanwhile, we hate to harp on it, but Byron Houston, who averages 21 points a game, is 2 out of 13 from the floor and 5 turnovers. Actually, that last one, the 3-second violation, was his 6th. No place to go. No shot right there! And what happened? Alexander didn't get over there in time. Jimmy King wasn't sure what he wanted to do with it. Got a break. The winner of this game will face Ohio State Sunday afternoon for the right to go to Minneapolis. 
Could it be Ohio State and Michigan for the third time this year? Or Ohio State and Oklahoma State for the third time ever? Jim, I'm going to tell you something that's interesting in another region. For the first time since 1980, two teams from a rookie league got to the Sweet 16, that being Cincinnati and Memphis State. It happened in 1980 with Syracuse and Georgetown. This year, two teams got to the Final Eight and have a chance for one of them, obviously, to be in the Final Four. That hasn't happened way back in the days when UNC Charlotte, 77, from a rookie league, made it to the Final Four. a daily weightlifter and I guarantee you Houston may be strong but he doesn't want to fool with Larry Limbo. <laughs> Sutton goes in. Does a great job getting his hands on the ball to rebound and then Houston has him. Could have been a walking violation there. They call it a jump ball and the arrow belongs to Oklahoma State. Boy, they all come in. And there's Limbo. Excuse me, fellas. I'm, I'm taking charge. Well, you could really go out for the Oklahoma State fine wrestling team with that kind of move. Well, Almost a pin of Bosco, yeah. Well, they had a man this year, Pat Smith, three-time winner of the NCAA championship, the 158-pounder. But the team did not have an opportunity to pin him. Dan Gable's club won another NCAA championship. His 11th. There's uh, the weightlifter, Larry Limbo, signaling the foul against Bosco. Nice wrestling update, Billy. I was impressed. Well, I was, I was raised in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, the home of Lehigh University. It used to be a wrestling capital. Chris Weber has been resting. Well, not resting. He's been sitting with four personal fouls for most of this half, and now he returns to the lineup. While he was out, Michigan outscored Oklahoma State 17 to 13. Now, Jim, that had to be at about the 18-minute mark, the best I can remember, because it was one of the first plays to start of the second half. 17:54. I was close. Well, he sat down for a long time, almost 10 minutes. Alexander made the first, the front of a one and one. And then everyone started to race down the court. Alexander held his hand up and said, wait a minute, don't I get one more? Uh, here's a young man that was the third leading free throw shooter in the nation last year at 89%, almost 90%. This year has dropped all the way down to just 76%. Well, he had a traumatic experience in a game against Iowa State when they were down a point at the end of the game with this two free throws, and his confidence at the line has been shaken ever since. Kind of interesting, when you talk about that yesterday, I mentioned Brian Stith of Virginia missing those two free throws at a home game. Came down to thereafter, and they said that they had talked to Alexander about Brian Stith and the way he had come back. Riley puts the Wolverines up by four. Riley with ten off the bench. And he's the MVP for Michigan so far. Weber has to be careful. Now, Weber and Davis, both with four, playing each other. Davis. Davis. And it's off Bosco. Byron Houston, if you remember, that was Bosco and he that were on, they were on the floor a minute or so ago. Houston enjoyed throwing that ball on his chest. Oklahoma State's now working the ball in a lot farther than they did when they were successful in the first half. They need to pull it back out a step or two. Get a little better spacing. Johnson. Three pointer. That's it to one. 13 for Sutton. Well, everybody thinking that could be back court, but again, Riley with a smart play got himself over the half court area. That's Reach all for around. Davis. Yep, Davis has fouled out. Jim, remember the last two fouls he had were touch fouls. He just had to be more aware of where he was. And we talked about his lack of experience as a basketball player. Just didn't have a feel for it there. As you said earlier, only his fourth year of organized basketball. 
Randy Davis fouling out, and uh, they'll bring back their starter, Bryant Reeves, who has made a couple of hoops. Right. Consecutive trips in this half, but has not really been physical with the Michigan team. What you know, Jim, I, I, my mind was distracted by Jalen Rose while that foul shot was going on. He was leading the cheers behind us for Michigan. That's <laughs> amazing. The Michigan fan section yeah. behind us. Huh? Yeah, he, he was—he uh, was orchestrating that cheer. That's it. Weber is out. He'll remember this game. He can't no, believe it. Really Incredulous. Chris Weber has fouled out of the game with seven minutes to go. And they're all his buddies. Rose and King. He gave a little peck on the cheek there. We'll see what happened. Reeves surprised him by putting the ball on the floor and going under him with no question. It was a foul. He never expected the big fellow to put the ball on the floor with a dribble. Weber now with four points. That's a career low. And Jim, here's where uh, a player like Riley, who was knocked out of a starting job, had to, knew he was going to have to sit for a long time. Instead of sulking on the bench all year long, has come in and made the contribution in what may be the most important game of the career, of his career. Without him tonight, this is going to be in serious trouble. Reeves will get one more because Michigan has committed 10, a double bonus situation. And there's Eric Riley. They'll need him the rest of the way. This free throw can tie it with 7.13 on the clock. Riley's average minutes played this year is 15 in a game. That stat when this game's over. Timeout on the floor. Television timeout. All fives on the scoreboard. You are watching the NCAA Basketball Championship on CBS. Oklahoma State set the all-time NCAA tournament record in one game with 80% against Tulane in its last outing. Tonight, Billy, half that, 41% against Michigan. Well, Jim, both of these teams were burning it up percentage-wise with their first two games in the tournament. And I said at the top, somebody is going to have to shut someone down defensively. What's happened tonight? Both teams have done that, and that's why we're sitting on a 55-55 score. <laughs> Juan Howard is in the game. He has four. Ray Jackson has four. He's also in the lineup. So it's four freshmen and Eric Riley, a junior. Michigan trying to set some screens to get a long lob pass here. A lot of back screens in this offensive set. Trying to get somebody to break free for a lob. 15 on the shot clock. They go to the blocks with Howard. They want a high, Jalen Rose wants a high screen so he can go off and make a play. Great step out that time by Houston. King may have to force one. Howard, follow through with the soft touch. Howard. The ability to see Eddie Sutton on one bench going against Michigan. Does that remind you of anything on CBS? First game ever when CBS got back in the college basketball was it was Bill Frieder who took a walking wounded team of Michigan down to face a very good Arkansas team. Did not win the game, but it was our first regular season game ever on CBS. Two freshmen big men answer each other. He's got nine now. Made a nice contribution now that he's got his feet on the ground. It's kind of a joke having him having his feet on the ground. He weighs about 280. He's got about size 20 feet. Five thirty on the game clock. 57-57. Rose will shoot two. Corey Williams. Corey Williams, number four. Sean Sutton, the floor leader for Oklahoma State. You saw him. Jalen Rose, his roommate, and buddy, Chris Weber, has fouled out. They have been playing basketball together since the eighth grade, although they went to different high schools. 
Jim, we're going to have to ask him that question that we brought up in the first game tonight. Had Eric Montross gone to Michigan, what would have been the sequence of events thereafter? Get your hands off the lead. 18 points, 10 rebounds. 19. 12 in the second half. Two-point lead for the Wolverines. With the sixth seed against the two seed. Six seed leading at the moment. It's Jalen and Jackson putting on the second half shows here tonight. Jimmy Jackson I'm talking about. Almost sounded like it was. Oh, look at Houston and Riley inside. I think that's going to be called on Houston. Sure, Riley was holding him down on the inside. Byron Houston, who is just totally upset tonight. That's his third foul. He hasn't been able to touch the ball. And we'll see it instead of Riley in here fight. And what, here's what happens. See, Houston just so strong for him. He throws him to the floor. But he's just totally frustrated in the low post tonight. He hadn't been able to get the ball. And I don't think Oklahoma State has done a good job setting him up to get the ball. Two out of 14 from the floor. Seven of Oklahoma State's 14 turnovers. And he's going out for Milton Brown. I think maybe Eddie Sutton's going to go out, talk to him real quick, and get him right back in the game. That's exactly what's going to happen. This is not for a rest. This is not for discipline. He just wants to talk to him and say, hey, we've got five to go, big fella. Get back in here and do it. Riley with one more to shoot. Riley, 10 points in the game, Billy, but 0 for 5 from the free throw line. Jim, I talked about minutes played. He's now played 23 minutes in this game. Only averages, as I said before, 15. Ready Hunter comes in. Let's see if Eddie Sutton puts Byron Houston right back in the game. Riley comes out, Hunter in. See, I think it's a perfect time to put him in because you have Juwan Howard and Reeves. There's nobody big enough. Probably have to be Hunter to match up with Houston. But he's going to sit. back in the ball game. Here he comes. Well, One possession. Byron Houston, now if you're Steve Fisher, you got to come back in with some more size. Riley sitting down is exhausted over there. But King almost palmed it. Rose. Rose just playing cat and mouse with him, trying to come out from a double screen down low. Rose is such a smart basketball player. You know, he's taking a little rest on his own here. You notice that? Just to get a breather. Hiding out for yep. the moment. He'll, there he is. He'll be the man when the shot clock comes down. He'll take the... Oh, yes. Three point haul. He is a smart ball player, that kid. Wise way beyond his years. Timeout called by Oklahoma State. Tomorrow, 4 o'clock, the road to the Final Four. Dale Brown will be in the studio. I'm sure he'll have the latest on Shaquille O'Neal if he's coming back or not. Plus a roundtable with Walton, Francesa, Phelps, O'Brien. West Regional Final, Indiana-UCLA tips at 440, followed by Kentucky-Duke. Now, Jim, this is the first time we uh, have ourselves in a situation after last night's one and two seeds holding uh, together. Looks like we have the possibility for a number six right here. King Block Williams. Uh, Rose didn't realize how quick Williams was. That's a good foul by Freddie Hunter. Saved him a basket. No question. What happened to Rose that time is that he just underestimated that explosive speed of Williams coming from behind, just took it away. 
If you can ever make a good foul, that was a good one by Freddie Hunter because without question, Oklahoma State had an easy two. Eric Riley is back on his feet, checking in for the Wolverines after this first free throw. They have a thing in the Big 8 called the all-bench team. If they had one in the Big 10, you'd have to think Riley would be a member of it. I've never heard of an all-bench team. It doesn't sound like something you want to make. No, you know, Jim, I, I think that's a misnomer. I think that, you know, the top sub or something like the top five subs, but all-bench means a guy that never gets in. Never gets in. The last guy on the team should make the all-bench I'd be annoyed if I'm making a contribution when I got on the floor. I mean... Randy Davis made the yeah, all big eight bench team. I think they ought to change the name of that one. <laughs> all sub team. You notice how Rose has not been handling the ball lately? There's a timeout called by Howard, the freshman again. 63-59, Wolverines with the timeout this time. You can ski a live volcano. Take a dip. Take your bike way up in the blue. Get your tidal wave and go. You can fight without the snow. But you've never done nothing like a diet. Full tilt taste. You won't believe it's a diet. You can leave. You can die. Take a ride in the sky. But you've never done nothing like a diet. Every business morning, while the rest of the world is getting up, UPS is guaranteeing overnight delivery before 10.30. For far less than other companies charge. And every business morning, more people are waking up to that fact. Good morning. Good morning. Right now at Pizza Hut, get a Supreme Pizza loaded with six delicious toppings like mouth-watering pepperoni and green peppers. Call Pizza Hut Delivery and get a medium Supreme for $7.99 and any other medium for just four bucks more. Call now. I used to have dandruff, so I tried head and shoulders. Then I tried Selsun Blue. Blue is better. Selsun Blue relieves dandruff flecking better than head and shoulders. And doctors recommend it more than head and shoulders, Danorex, and Tegrin. Blue is better. Selsun Blue. Chevy Blazer, 1992's four-wheeler of the year. With three and a half ton towing, more room, more comfort, and more major awards, 1992's four-wheeler of the year is the all-new Blazer from Chevrolet. The trucks you can depend on, the trucks that last. Monday. Rick? Is this Maggie's ex-lover? I detect a note of jealousy, Fleischman. Jealous me of a dog? You decide. Is this Rick? Northern Exposure, Monday. Billy Duke in Kentucky tomorrow at the Spectrum. Is there any destiny here? The last time the Final Four was held in Minneapolis, Kentucky was the national champ. And it hasn't been, Jim, since 1982 that the number one ranked team in the nation has won a national championship. That was North Carolina. So, as a matter of fact, when you look back here, in the 80s, NC State, Villanova, and Kansas, three teams that won weren't even in the top 20 at the end of the regular season, and it went on to win a national championship. Duke and Kentucky met 14 years ago tonight in the national championship game. Jack Gibbons had 41 to lead the Wildcats. Uh, Rose is down. Looked like he was doing a push up there. He was in no hurry to get up. No. And what he's trying to do is to let somebody else handle the ball for a while. Five seconds left. Beats the shot. Houston. He walked. Oh, his eighth turnover of the game. Nothing going right for Byron Houston. Absolutely nothing. This game ends. We'll send you out to the finish of this one, UTEP Cincinnati. Bearcats by 11 in the second half. And the big men are handling the ball out on the perimeter. Now Rose has had enough rest. He wants Hatcher, an excellent defender, leading career as Steel Man. A new record for Oklahoma State now on Rose. Four 
point lead for the Wolverines. You know, you take it as if they have a big lead here, but they really don't. You know, one big turnover. The nation may know them as the Fab Five, but tonight has been the life of Riley. I guarantee you. He has saved them with Weber on the bench and only four points fouled out by 30 minutes. This is the three, Reeves. Hold on, is it against Reeves yeah, or no, Jackson? No, it's going to be against Jackson coming over Reeves back. That's five on Jackson. He's out of there. Number five, so Weber and Jackson both have fouled out. Well, another bloody nose. I'll tell you what, Reeves a little groggy right now. Seven remaining in this game, 65-59, Michigan. Jim, this may be a little bit of a break because Reeves will not have to shoot the fouls. He's going to sit on the bench and be attended to. That brings Alexander, who, as I said earlier, was the third leading free throw shooter in the nation a year ago, and he shoots 76% now. Ray Jackson has fouled out with three points, joining Chris Weber right alongside of him. It was also fouled out. Rob Palinka comes in. See, Eddie Sutton has the right to put anybody from that bench on out there to shoot the free throws. Again, the winner of this game will play Ohio State Sunday in the Southeast Final. And Billy, you said it a moment ago, Alexander, one of the best last year in the nation at the line, and then had that troubling situation at Iowa State in the late going where he missed two free throws. Two big ones here. 76, it's not like he became a bad free throw shooter, but when you go from roughly 90% down to 76, that's quite a fall off. Reeves is now back. He is very groggy on the bench. Four-point game. 147 on the game clock. I'd say Michigan better get the ball in Rose's hands the rest of the way. Look out. Oh, Riley, what a play! court oh but how about the play Jim he realized he was being double team on the catch and just batted the ball forward and look at how happy Steve Fisher is for that young man that was a sensational play smart thinking fourth against Alexander and uh, Riley has had his problems tonight in the line now we'll see what happened they don't Howard doesn't get the ball back to Rose now Riley sees what's coming and just taps the ball forward to what would have been a layup for Jimmy King Hatcher out, Reeves back in. A smart play by Ray Riley, but an inadvertent smart play by Oklahoma State. One of six from the line. Well, how about that foul? When it's going right for you, Jim, everything falls. This is first five. Now he's made two straight. Season high in both points and rebounds. 15 and 10 for Riley. And that's amazing. 10 rebounds being a season high last year. The number two rebounder in the Big Ten. It's not like he wasn't capable. They had a nine block game last year, too. Seth lays it in and a timeout called by the Cowboys. 15 for Sutton. 127 to go. Cowboys will talk. Kids laugh when I just talk. I hate them. Proud Monday. Rupp Arena, Southeast Regional Semifinal. Oklahoma State has one timeout remaining, trailing 67-63 with 127 to go. Jim Nance, Billy Packer, Curry Kirkpatrick. We heard Brian Reeves had to go out, had a tooth knocked loose, but he's been back in, although he's not in the lineup at this moment. You notice how Rose stayed away from the ball to conserve his strength for a while. Now he's coming back to accept it. That really helps Michigan. Sutton bumped into King. His third. Utep within eight now of the Bearcats. 
Interesting, Sean Sutton there with the foul. I, I saw a little clip about him. Of course, he still has a lot of friends back in Kentucky. One of his closest, John Pelfrey. And when they talked recently, Pelfrey said, you're lucky you're still not at Kentucky. You don't shoot enough to play at Kentucky. <laughs> and he said, yeah, well, you're lucky you're not at Oklahoma a and because you don't play Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. You don't play enough defense to play out here. So nice little slap back and forth between two good friends. There's Reeves for Hatcher. Sutton trying to avoid seeing his college career end the same place it started. Well, for Actually, Billy thought about going to Michigan once, uh, once it was determined he would no longer stay at Kentucky. Fisher and Frieder both came down trying to recruit him to go play for the Wolverines. Uh, this one... Was off Reeves' hand, and I think Riley had him hooked. <laughs> Riley's laughing because he knows that he really committed the foul and got away with it. Hatcher comes back in for defensive reasons. A minute six remaining. But as we said before, not much going wrong for Riley tonight. There's Rose again, coming back to get the ball. King runs it down for the save. Under a minute to go. Now, you know what Rose did there, Jim? He saw that Riley was wide open, but he knew that Oklahoma State was going to foul the first man they could, so he, instead of passing to the open man, saying, hey, I'd rather be on the line than put Riley on the line, he retained possession. The kid is always thinking. And the normal tendency there would be to throw to the first open man. And he knew what would happen. He'd go right out and foul Riley. 56 seconds from a third game of the year, a rematch with Ohio State. Ohio State beat the Wolverines 68-58 at Michigan, holding the Wolverines to only 13 points in the first half. And then 77-66, Buckeyes at home. So they beat them two for two. Well, Jim, you know what Jalen Rose told us. Yeah, we were, and that was no idea they would ever meet again. A month ago. That was before the Indiana game. Would you rather face Indiana or Ohio State? They said, we think Ohio State's the toughest. And they could end up beating them both. They, 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 might, they might, and of course, if they were to go all the way and meet Indiana, that'd be a rematch of the 76 NCAA championship in Philadelphia. Ricky Green led Michigan to the finals. Indiana won it. That's going. Right that was an NBA three. That cuts it to four, and that was Oklahoma State's last timeout. When you've got something precious, you can pay the copper field Tuesday. Michigan and Oklahoma State. Fire in Houston's line. His season low, seven points. He averages 21. And is dangerous setting a new low tonight. Jim, nobody guarding a man out of bounds. Palinka put in the game for his free throw shooting. So right now, the only weak free throw shooter in the game for Michigan is Riley. Because you've got Palinka at 87%. You've got Rose at 75. You've got Howard at 67. And King at 72. So it's going to be very difficult for Oklahoma State to foul a poor free throw shooter here. Two for Rose. Hey, did you know Oklahoma State and Michigan are going to meet again on September the 19th? At Michigan Stadium. College football. Maybe Corey Williams will be facing the Wolverines, this time in pads. One more for Rose. 37 seconds remaining. Remember, the Cowboys don't have any timeouts. Three and a two. Down five. Williams hit one a moment ago. And one more. One more. That's down to two. Plenty of time here. And Howard gets fouled. And you know, you can see that Jalen Rose is talking to Riley saying, the ball is to come to me. Rose wanted to be on that foul line again. How about Corey Williams with back-to-back -back threes from way out there with players in his face. Jim, we almost like burying Oklahoma State here, and I think a lot of the fans have, you know. 
thinking that Michigan already has this one won, but not the case. Howard will shoot two. 68% on the season. Big free throw there. Well, he can really seal this up now if he can make this one because Oklahoma State will need the two possessions and they don't have a timeout to stop the clock on the end line. Steve Fisher says his free throw shooter is our fiercest, our fiercest competitor. And he hits him by Barry, two big ones. I mean, no timeouts for Oklahoma State. Michigan took one. Unbelievable off-balance three. Three of them in the last minute, and it's down to one. On CBS. Sean Sutton's three a moment ago may have actually been a two. It's hard to tell, Billy, but it looks like the toe's on the line to me. Uh, that was a good call by you, Jim, and you brought it up during that timeout. Uh, we didn't have the angle on it. But the official they call it was the back official. Goes to Rose. He's going to be on that line to win this thing. Even if he makes them both, Oklahoma State should have a chance for a tie. They can tie it in the way they've been putting them up between Sutton and Williams. Williams can get up that court so quickly. Billy, with 56 seconds to go in this game, it was Michigan 70. And Oklahoma State 63, a seven-point lead with 56 seconds to go. Cowboys have gotten two threes by Corey Williams, one by Sutton, and they're within one. Rose will shoot two. Now they can win the game, Jim, with a three. Do you have the guts if he makes this? to foul them to make sure you can't lose this game with a three? Would it be Sutton for Sutton to come back here? Oh, man. To pull out a game at the end, Sean Sutton. Timeout, Timeout Michigan. Michigan. Cowboys will have a chance to set up with seven seconds remaining. We respect... No timeouts remaining, Billy. Michigan leads by two. Oklahoma State has the ball. Uh, Jim, we saw Georgia Tech have a chance to solve the way a game to earlier tonight. They did not put the ball in the hands of their primary dribbler, who would have been Travis Best. In this particular case, neither team has a timeout left, so this is really going to be the last play of the game. Sean Sutton gets it up, looking for Williams. He's driving on Rose, spinning over, tries to force it. He was looking for a backdoor cut on a reverse dribble, thinking at Williams. Boy, what thoughts are going through that young man's mind now. See, he was trying for the reverse dribble, figuring that they would overplay Williams and Williams would get the backdoor cut. But excellent defense that time by King, who didn't fall for it. Just remember one thing, if Howard hits only one of two, it was on this night, on the Friday night of the Sweet 16, two years ago, when with 1.0 seconds on the clock at the Meadowlands, Tate George hit a game winner. And they had to go the length of the court with that one. Howard will shoot two. Still have a chance. If he makes, it'll give Oklahoma State maybe a better chance to inbound. Yeah, he'd be better off if he if he could put it right off the rim to put it off the rim. Yep. But that then you take the chance of missing the basket altogether. But he'd be smart to miss this shot. Off the rim. Now, may, now Oklahoma State can set up for one. And look at who's back here. Byron Houston not even under the basket. Milton Brown. No way. Michigan is headed to the regional final.
the Southeast Regional, but it's a Big Ten final. Ohio State and Michigan will duel for the third time this season on Sunday. The Chevrolet players of the game, Eric Riley of Michigan, had a season high in both points and rebounds, and Corey Williams of Oklahoma State. and Michigan. No strangers. They will meet Sunday for the right to go to the Final Four. Let's send you back to Pat O'Brien.